Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be chatting a little bit about, ooh, the mystical keyword, answer some listener questions, and like always, just kind of chat clicks. This is episode 494. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. Oh yeah, you only have the high ground. I got a better question for you. Yeah, did you roll a crit six before the battle started? Yeah. Instant deadpan humor. Over oh, six yeah. people, people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you that talked Absolute fools. I mean, I'll be that out. That's cool because it's expensive. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and silk products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you missed the incredible Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and Cyber Tuesday they kind of did on the shop.wizkids site, and you still want a little bit of savings, well, some in-stock item savings can be given to you by the code DIALH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Jeremy the always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, another week down, another week to go. Right on. Perfect. We'll just kick off with uh, what made you happy this week, my man. Sure thing. Made me happy this week was uh, I got a bonus from work. Oh, cool. Now, I, I, I'm not going to pretend like it was an amazing bonus. By my calculations, it was missing a zero or two. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it is nice to be appreciated, especially around, like, the, the holidays. This wasn't a holiday bonus. This was a uh, no things suck right now kind of bonus. So mm. it, was, it was appreciated. Um but for future reference, yeah, add add a few zeros, and then we'll then we'll be a little happier, you know. Yeah. Let me retire early, that kind of thing. But no, uh, it's nice and it's a uh, perfect timing because I am going to buy myself all kinds of presents this Christmas. I am nice. going to really spoil myself, put a bunch of stuff under the tree for me because that's the <laughs> only person on my nice list this year. I guess. Whoa. You know, I, Legally, Whoa. I have to I have to buy one for the Dial H Secret Santa as well. So right. there's legally, that. But. Legally, legally binding Dial H Secret Santa contract. Wow. All right. So, <laughs> all right, man. Uh, kind of in the same boat in a way. But what made me happy this week was some of my Black Friday, Cyber Monday stuff got in. I got a brand new computer after my entire life of only ever owning laptops i finally got a gaming desktop tower computer that came in friday night worked on getting it set up used my old tv as a monitor that was absolutely murdering my eyes and it looked horrible Uh, and then that saturday went to best buy and got a new monitor it's kind of funky it's kind of like curved oh yeah yeah. it's really weird it kind of it's really throwing me off I think I'm getting used to it, but it is wacky dacky. Uh, I've not played video games on this computer yet, but we'll see what happens. It's just been a little too busy going around doing things, but soon enough, we'll actually be able to play video games lag free and I won't load into a match two to three minutes after everybody else on my call (laughs) has loaded in, which will be really, really cool. And I cannot wait for that to happen. So, so yeah, that's, that's what made me happy this week. New computer, new monitor, lap of luxury, all this cool stuff. And I can't wait to like run the world's greatest game on it, which is like Team Fortress 2. I was going to ask you what the first game you would download would be, but then I remembered it would just be Team Fortress 2. Yep, 100%. And that that is the first game I downloaded. I, like, sent a video to my friends. I was like, whoa, what's this? TF2 downloading? Huh? Tower? Huh? What? Yeah, so that's going to be up there. I do want to play this new Lethal Company game I've been hearing a ton about, though. Uh, It's only 10 Steam dollars, and I'm like, well, I've got enough. TF2 items I don't need. I could probably sell to get 10 Steam dollars. So this Lethal Company game I really want to try whenever uh, whenever I get the time and Steam funds to do so. I want to give that a shot. But oh yeah, we're jamming. We're jamming TF2 on this bad boy. It's awesome. It's the TF2 machine. It's what it exists. What do you do? You play Team Fortress 2. That's it, buddy. Oh, That's no. all you do. <laughs> so yeah, 
But all right, let's go ahead. There's not a lot of news to jump into this week. So we're going to do a little, uh, ooh, you feeling generic, Simeon? You feeling... You feeling just like, like a dude? <laughs> There's no I, good. I feel very I was, generic. I feel very. <laughs> I looked at I looked at my Spotify results for this. Oh year, yeah, I feel very generic. I saw you and uh, you and someone else I knew had similar songs. A, a past super fan, dare I say, uh, had similar Spotify raps. Not I entirely. I, could, I bet I could guess that Florida person's I think, name. I think you probably can. <laughs> Oh, but it was just pretty, it was pretty funny. But anyways, we got a generic gallery. We're going to be looking over the mystical keyword. We both got done playing at Dragon's Lair today, and we both, we, neither of us played a mystical, did you play a mystical theme? Was that what your theme was? It was was mystical. mystical Okay. It was, I was like, you know what? Actually, no, it does. Do you play the mystical theme today? Not necessarily the team you're going to go over, but you know, let's do a little, uh, what what we played today. Might as well. Yeah. So my, yeah, I think goes uh, it was 300 golden with a five point point reduction for any character that was ice, snow, holiday kind of themed. So like fit in like the, the December month kind of theme, yeah. uh, which you could like stretch that to be quite a few things, but um, that's essentially what it was. And then we didn't know what the secret d6 roll was going to be but there was going to be at yeah, the beginning of each round there was going to be a new thing that uh occurred or like a new i don't know what, what would you call that it was like a battlefield condition yeah. pretty much it was yeah, like a global effect condition. at the beginning of each round yeah so what i set out to build and what i ended up with uh sometimes i forget what i have in my collection just because i've traded things or sold them or like gotten new things and so sometimes i'll put things on my team because i had them at one point and i'll go and find like pull the box out and i'll dig through it and be like i don't have that anymore so i like throws a wrench in the whole thing but uh originally i had the loki chase from disney plus but my team ended up being um true golden age only because of one figure so uh, starting off with the team, it was Rat King from the second tur- uh, Turtle set. I don't know what was that one called. Uh, sewers. Ooh, um, Heroes in a half shell. Heroes in a half. Sh- I think that's Heroes in a half shell. Because then it was Shredder's Return and then Unplugged. So yeah, it was the Rat King. He's a rare from there, and I will say, uh, point wise, not not the best, but he has gotten a lot better for two big reasons. One, uh, improved targeting on him is insane, but uh, that hasn't really gotten better. It was always really good. Uh, So with the Wonder Woman 80 changes, he no longer takes pushing damage for that second action. So obviously that's helped a lot of characters, helps this guy as well. Uh, And then the second thing is he has pretty standard range, but then he has a free movement uh, if he occupies hindering terrain, you place him in another square of hindering terrain within six squares. On small maps, that means that the next thing that I list off was almost unnecessary. You could say I hardly used it. Uh, but yeah, he's got Perplex Prob, and then he's got a special mind control top dial where he uh, uses a range value of six, sees through elevated, hindering, blocking, just period, and characters. He's one of the few characters... I think ever that like just sees straight through like blocking. Yeah. Uh, so really cool mind control. Sadly, he only has one lightning bolt. I could have equipped him with something better that would have given him two lightning bolts, but instead I gave him the motorcycle so that he'd have running shot. So <laughs> on his own, if I placed correctly, he had an effective range of, let's see, that'd be 11, 17 squares which I didn't need. If I used his perplex, I could have got that up to 18. I really didn't need any of that. I I really shouldn't have given him the motorcycle, but uh, it was fun. Also, it lets him carry, which I thought would be great to carry the toy soldier, except toy soldier, good old snowfall, Santa's workshop, mystical uh, soldier, and toy keywords. Two of those very prevalent nowadays. Uh, yes, very much so. Toy Soldier has a trait that's, um, it's a long trait, but at the end of it, it says you can't 
uh, let's see, not the trait, uh, second trait. Um, Boy soldier and friendly wooden soldier bystanders can't be carried or placed. Ah, so, well. The whole idea where I was like, I'll just carry toy soldier with Rat King on the motorcycle. Because uh, I was going for I was going for Mouse King from Nutcracker and then Toy Soldier from also Nutcracker, but sadly, I didn't read my card ahead of time. Uh, is, Toy Soldier's whole thing. Okay. If you haven't played it, you have to. I played it wrong game one because I just wasn't paying attention. So that's good. But uh, every turn at the beginning of your turn, you generate a wooden soldier, but you can only do so if you maintain some sort of like straight line for all soldiers they have to be in a firing line at all times I don't know why this is like the third time I've played them and I don't know why I always forget this I always just make a yeah. bystander somewhere but yeah it has to be a diagonal a row or a column and then they all have sidestep with zero speed uh, toy soldier himself has a 10 attack top dial the bystanders have a 9 they all have toughness and then the special damage power on toy soldier is uh, gives him and friendly wooden bystanders, wooden soldier bystanders, uh, enhancement, but only to affect other char- friendly characters named toy soldier or wooden soldier. And when they hit with a ranged attack, you add one action to your action total this turn. Mm. It's a really fun idea because it's a firing line kind of situation. So they have a printed one, toy soldier has a printed two, so he's the one that's actually able to dish out damage. But the idea that you could potentially keep firing keep hitting this is definitely like a piece you could build around i just mostly threw it on there because i haven't played him in a long time and i wanted to also i misremembered rat king and thought he had mastermind so i was like bystanders are great for mastermind he does not have mastermind anymore on his dial Ah. so i'm I'm 0 for 2 on remembering what these characters do that is rough yeah so when i when i was building this i just kind of went on an assumption instead of like reading uh, next was Jacob Marley from the Rest in Peace set, the Undead set. He has the ghostly form, which is he can only he has flight, but he can only carry characters with the Ghost Realm keyword. Ghost Realm. And I'm just realizing right. he does not have mystical. So I just Ooh. zero for three on knowing. Ooh, <laughs> Simeon, no. It's a good thing I lost all three games. Oh, wow, man. that is funny. Oh gosh, jeez. Well, you kind of, but you had like a uh, a theme in the sense of it was very <sighs> Nutcracker Christmas theme. So it makes That's sense. Really, why now. doesn't he have mystical though? I don't know. A ghost is not a mystical thing. It makes sense monster. now because when I was building the team, I was, I had uh, highlighted the mystical keyword, so I was only looking at those characters, and then I was looking for like snow. Like, obviously, you can't on any website narrow down by snow-ish or December-ish characters. Right. <laughs> but right, uh, yeah. I was going through like all the mystical ones, and then at one point when I had to start re changing stuff around i must have just been like oh yeah jacob marley of course and thrown thrown him in there without checking to see if he was mystical but uh yeah so, <laughs> so my team this didn't disqualify me but i did cheat on every single uh initiative role because Very of that nice and Very then nice. uh last and probably the big crux of the team was wendigo so if you add all this together i was over on points but i had uh, Jacob Marley's from a Christmas story, so that's enough December-ish. That's a minus five to his cost. Toy Soldier, obviously, minus five. And that's all I really needed. Rat King, you could kind of slip in there, but I just needed the extra ten because I put on a hundred-point Wendigo. And then, Wendigo. obviously, sidelined for free, Chathon, the Elder yes. God, Demon of the Dark Hold. So I thought Wendigo at 100 points with plus one combat values would be interesting. Um, I still think it is. I just don't think... I obviously wasn't playing optimally with this team. I was just kind of grabbing stuff. But yeah, the Wendigo offsetting the damage, the unavoidable damage with healing and being able to heal above his starting line, potentially getting four attacks for the cost of one action stuff like that. I just didn't have a good way to get wounded tokens out there effectively. Rat King was kind of my like crux for getting wounded tokens out there. And so every game I ended up losing because 
Jathon came out on the board at some point, and my opponent just had way more stuff than me. So uh, wow. I think the best was the last game against Mike, where I popped him out and I shot, I killed three polar bear like hired fl- hired thugs. Uh, oh, the expendable goons. Expendable yeah. goons. Jeez. Um, I killed three polar bear goons, netting me a total of. 45 points uh but then that was like that was it and two of them came right back so (laughs) it was like man there was no chance of me dealing enough damage to his team to where i was like ever gonna cut through anything but i did score an insane amount of goon points in that game so had shathon not come out had uh which i don't think it's optional let me double check uh is KO'd you may immediately oh so I could have I could have just not generated I guess that's on me oh yeah. for four on this team well uh, that, um <laughs> ooh, ooh. I, I went oh for three in this uh thing but yeah playing I thought Wendigo would be a good candidate for the um demon of the dark hold trait and I think I still think he is I just think that someone better is probably going to come along or is out there already. Uh, you've got to have a heck of a way to heal, and the stat modification obviously is like you should probably have more support than just having plus one combat values. It's cool, but yeah. That was my team. Uh, I already said I went 0-3. Everyone managed to kill Wendigo, and then I once again misread something on my team and just so just thought I'd spit Chathon out and end the game next turn. But uh, Might as well. Yeah, it is fun. It's a lot of fun having him on the board all of a sudden at 300 points. It's just... It also ends the game prematurely. So, Very true. Very, very true. Well, right on. Uh, what I played, I guess, won't really get us into the... Uh, totally into generic gallery here, but it does have a few characters with the mystical keyword. But I just wanted to try to like try to min max like a really good Dracula team. Like if you had to play competitively, but then Dracula had to be on the team, that was kind of my idea because I don't think Dracula can be played competitively necessarily because uh, he's 125 points, but he's really fun. So I put Dracula on the board. I gave him the Hell Cycle, which is a great image. Uh, I really like it. So now he's got Mystics the entire time, which makes his dial feel... He kind of makes you... I don't know. I just wanted people to feel bad for hitting Dracula if he had Mystics, you know? And then he also has plus two speed, which is huge. And then I put on both Scott Porters, because it just feels like if you want to build anything uh, competitive or min-max anything, they just kind of have to be there, uh, because they're kind of super stupid good. What's Um, nice and also terrible about Scott Porters is they are, at this point entirely relegated to just 300 modern Very there's true. no other uh yeah well, i mean they don't, silver, they don't work in theme would they not they have celebrity that's the one you could, yeah you could they have. do their printed keywords in theme but like you can't throw them onto any team because they get keywords right that is so, true so it would just be celebrity which yeah. bro so like celebrity silver teams and modern theme are probably insane and then uh, golden i guess but yeah and but yeah theme and uh popper no go Right, yeah, no popper, no theme outside celebrity. Yeah, pulp. yeah, pop, pulp. pulp. Yeah, pulper. how dare you? Yeah, dead, dead name pulp, bro. Come on. <laughs> anyway, no, but uh, so we have the Scotty boys, uh, black shirt with the blue ring, yellow shirt with the ye- or white shirt with the yellow ring, and then we had double Captain America Pegasuses, Pegasi. The I think he's great, obviously, clearly a biased answer here, but I think he's awesome. And then I gave both caps the symbiotes, one the red symbiote and one the black symbiote, so the Carnage and Venom symbiote, respectively, because that gives both of them seal energy. So then I would TK up Scott. He would charge, maybe perplex up his speed, which means he could move a whole seven squares after being TK'd. Charge, move up, maybe kill something. All he has to do is hit, right? But maybe kill something, turn it into a vampire. Uh, he hits something, and then both caps get to move up, you know, four squares, and then they get to hypersonic again. So that gives the caps a 12-square reach, and Dracula an 11-square reach just, like, right away. So if, they, if like, someone moved up just, like, a little bit on these small maps, Dracula could get to them, caps could get to them. And then 
honestly, after Drac healed once, no one ever damaged him. Everybody was like, got to kill the Captain Americas, got to get rid of those guys. And they did. The Caps died almost every game. But, man, it's pretty easy. Once Dracula heals once, to keep him there, especially with all the bonuses, Cap giving him ESD, uh, white shirt or black shirt, whichever one, it, I honestly forget. They have an insane amount of effects, and I kind of forget. And they just kind of all happen at once. But giving everybody a plus one defense if they're next to somebody that's they share a keyword with. So then Dracula goes up. If he makes a vampire, he instantly is 20 defense now with Invincible, and he's got stealth now. Like, it's just so great. And then once he gets to his top dial, he just, like, never went down. So it was super fun. The only bad thing about the team was most of the games went pretty fast, and I could never really use Dracula more than, like, like one attack, flurry. Maybe if he cleared, he would get to do something next turn. But it was, like, most games were done in, like, three or four turns. It was really fast. But yeah. I really I really enjoyed it. Uh, I like 14. Min-max, yeah, the 14 attack, flurry, Dracula for... If I had all three empowers, eight damage, X point is so insane. So, yeah, Dracula was a ton of fun once you get him, like, rolling. And I think the biggest thing that was super nice was that no one ever hit him first, uh, which was just huge. So, I don't know. I, I just loved building with it. And then Dracula has the mystical keyword. That's how I'll link this into our generic gallery. But it was a super fun team to play. It was very, very good. I think if I want to play it more casually, probably drop in both Scots. But I do like the idea of it. And it was a past theme team. So Cap is an old man. He has passed. Dracula is a super old man. He has passed. And then Scott's are. It's kind of old. He's got passed, too. Well, you, you could just choose it. But anyways, that was my team. Simeon, let's get into generic gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but, you know, you get it. Like we said, we're focusing heavily on the mystical keyword with a pretty big Wheels of Vengeance vibe. It's got a lot of mystical pieces in it. It's got a ton to, like, mess around with and build. So I built a 300-point silver theme team, a theme event team. And, I mean, you built a 300-pulp team yeah. using the mystical keyword. Modern pulp. Modern pulp, we yeah. haven't seen Aren't silver you, uh... pulp, but... No. Yeah. That'd be... Hmm. I wonder what silver pulp would look like. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funny. But what is your team with, like, the mystical keyword? Obviously, we're, like, we mentioned, like, Thon, Dracula's got the mystical keyword, Wendigo's got the mystical keyword. Uh, there's Tri-Sentinel, like, there's a ton of good older pieces, you know, uh, Felix Faust, all sorts of crazy stuff. Mystical's been never, I feel like, as strong as Monster, but a very strong keyword in its own right. Uh, yeah. And one that you have pretty good experience messing around with, so what'd you build <laughs> for uh, Pulp, my man? Yeah, uh, sadly both pulp and theme have a highlander rule so yes no so. tend to go uh try try sentinel no matter what the format is uh at least if it's like official pulp or theme but yes in my in my pulp format i also wanted to kind of min max dracula i think i honestly think that he has a shot in pulp for a couple different reasons uh there's an unthemed version or a monster i guess theme version of this where I would play Dracula with uh, Necron, because Dracula, if he hits, he can give Necron free half-speed move, which I think is interesting. I haven't messed around with it. but uh, So starting off with Dracula, obviously we know what he does. He heals up, starts with a 12 for 4, and yeah, that's, that's pretty good. He gets charge, flurry, stealth. If he makes his first attack, if he KOs something, he will get a... He will generate a vampire, which is important that you generate and it's not sideline because yeah that's in pulp that means you can have more than one vampire even though uh the highlander rules in effect it's generated after the game begins so it doesn't take up sideline space to get dracula into position uh we've got a couple things first off i've got classic old tk with dr strange from avengers forever so this is the uncommon 022 i'm playing him at 40 he has running shot leadership 
and then he's got his that special thing that a lot of the characters in that set had. He has if he uses it and succeeds instead of uh, using the normal leadership effects, you can generate an astral Doctor Strange on click one. Those are mostly just enhancement; they're enhancement phasing uh, super senses, so they're just tie up. They're not dealing damage really or anything like that, but. Definitely interesting to get some enhancement that way. And then the other thing is if he rolls a 6, you can instead generate a 013 Wong on click 1 if there isn't a friendly one on the map already. And Wong also has enhancement. He has 3 damage with a 10 attack. He has Force Blast, ESD Willpower, and then he has Phasing. And once per turn, when an adjacent friendly character with the mystical keyword begins a move after resolutions, you may place Wong in a square adjacent to them, which is pretty interesting but uh dr strange is mostly here for his perplex and his tk and then he has tk as free but only to target himself that means if i'm not tking someone else if i'm just giving old dr strange a four square tk then i have a effective range uh if i'm using perplex technically i can get to square 15 with him it can be like an 11 for 3 15 square reach pretty decent with running shot tk and six range double lightning bolt and then a perplex to go somewhere in there but he's mostly there to get dracula into position maybe give drac a 13 attack to make sure that first hit actually hits uh then next up my second attacker secondary attacker strange kind of fits this role but this guy's just way better than strange is when it comes to attacking it's orb the old, uh, the new, I should say, Orb from Wheels of Vengeance. So he's got the Watcher's Stolen Eye. At Orb's attack rolls of 1-1 one, one are critical hits instead of critical misses. When Orb attacks, you may replace one die in his attack roll with a 1. Once per game, you may choose that a friendly character's critical miss becomes a critical hit. If you do, Orb can't use this trait this game. I think if I'm doing my opening attack with Dracula and I just whiff it completely, crit miss, it's worth getting rid of this trait. To like to make it a critical hit i'm probably koing something if i do that yeah definitely he has improved movement through elevated outdoor blocking and through adjacency then he has the other trait that gives him charge and then flurry but only if he crossed the rim of elevation elevated terrain this turn when orb attacks modify his attack plus one for each of the following he moved through this turn hindering blocking terrain and characters so it's not Super likely that with his like running shot, he's going to get all three of these. But it is possible. It's possible. And it makes it a little bit more possible if I use... Oh, he's also running shot energy explosion. And then, yeah, prob. So the prob with only four range isn't ideal, but he can potentially mm, right. get into position before Dracula to prob. Or he can just use his global once per game uh, reroll. So something that makes it easier for him to get flurry... Uh, not not flurry, but oh, flurry as well. But mostly the modify attack plus one. So it's for each of the following he moved through this turn. It doesn't say like with charge or whatever. That's how you would normally assume. But if he just moves through it a different way via I don't know like Kazar from uh, the old Avengers Forever oh. set. Yeah. So Kazar has obviously at the beginning of the game you generate Zabu, which is a great bystander little charge blades piece. When Kazar is given a move action, after resolutions, you may move another friendly character that shared a keyword with or friendly Zabu bystander up to half its speed value. So I can either use this to really mobilize Dracula or maybe slingshot him, you know, send him, send him up and then pull him back. Um, or I can use this with Orb to give Orb a little bit extra movement, you know, maybe go out of my way to hit a hindering, a blocking or a character, whichever it may be. So yeah, like I think Kazar's a really good slot filler on this. Not only is he decent with uh, mobilizing those two, but he's also just pretty solid on his own. He's got charge, leap climb, and stealth with combat reflexes, which means he's mostly going to be a 19 unless they have improved targeting through hindering. Uh, he sends out that bystander. He can make that bystander again if he succeeds on his leadership. And uh, yeah, so... Sending out that uh, Zabu, sending out Orb or Dracula. And then to 
to really finalize, flesh out the team, I don't think a pulp mystical team should be without Raven. So this is the um, the Raven from the main set. It's the main set of like the team up starter. Are you allowed to do the team up starter? Yeah, because it shares the team. Yeah, because it has yeah. a. Yeah, because it has set. Set. Yeah. Uh, right. So this is the has to be the forty point one I'm looking at. Oh, because okay. I think the main set is more expensive. No, it's the they're both forty. The forty, 40 point, point the starter at its highest is forty, and then it's twenty five. In the main set, I want to say the main set is forty, and then seventy five. No, it's fifty, and then yeah. 75. Okay, so uh, then you are this is the yeah, this is the starter then. The okay. special starter. Okay, yeah. So mystics and team or mystics and teen titan team abilities, which I think no, no one has wild. I thought uh, orb might have wild card, but oh sure. Uh, her main thing is she's got TK, and then when she uses it after resolutions, you remove an action token from the placed character, which is great for the yo-yo effect as well. Um, if you pull, like yank somebody back, remove an action token, or if you just don't succeed on leadership, willpower, or whatever, and you want to remove an action token so they can act, taking an action to do that is solid, I think. I really only have you know two big attackers on this team, Doctor Strange maybe being like a third tertiary attacker, but if I have Dracula double tokened, taking the action with Raven to TK him so that I can do another action, probably worth it. Uh, and then down dial, she has a special shape change, and then it gives her power once per game. Choose a character with the Teen Titans keyword in your KO area. That's not happening at all. Uh, so, yeah, there's no other Teen Titans on this team, huh. but. There is a red raven on the sideline. Obviously, um, if that raven, if the main force raven is KO'd, red raven gets to come in. And then since it's a character that is Teen Titans keyword and named raven, I instead get to turn red raven to click one. So it is a 75-point gamble, but you get uh, charge flurry with an 11 attack, blades, 2 damage, battle fury, and then the Red Rally 6, if you manage to get her in and you get two, your opponent rolls sixes twice uh, and you manage to like stay alive, then you can remove two of Red Raven's Rally Dice. And if you do this game, she gets Steel Energy, uh, Colossal Symbol, and Cosmic Energy, which is, I pulled it off once and it is game changing. It is uh, Red Raven with Steel Energy is pretty wild. The Colossal Willpower and Reach is really good. Um, and then obviously Cosmic Energy, so she can't be outwitted and all that stuff. But that's mostly a, uh, a last-ditch effort kind of thing, pulling her in. But yeah, I really like this team. I think it's got a couple different ways you can play it. You can go all-in on sending Dracula. You can go all-in on sending Orb and half-send Dracula as like a follow-up. Um, you can also just hold back a little bit and hope that uh, Doctor Strange can make some tie-up pieces, maybe tie up with uh, the Zabu bystander, and then if Strange gets enough of his little astral projections out, then you've got uh, an orb that can potentially do, uh, you know, like 12 for 6 or something. So, fun little team, comes out to exactly 300 points, and uh, yeah, the only I think the only issue is you got to collect a few extra astral doctor stranges oh sure i like it i think it's fun anything that kind of messes around with like going faster and farther like that kazar that doctor strange that wong and stuff like that i'm always a big fan of yeah. just really fun like unique ways of placing people that's not just like tk or a taxi well, you know especially because all these uh twinkie base figures they can't be tk'd so Right. Um, it's it's a good thing that we've got characters like Kazar and Falcon and stuff in Pulp where they can you can still get them across the map. They're not like right. shut out from the, you know, popper Pulp meta or anything like that because there's still ways to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, that is Simeon's that's Modern Pulp. I have built a Silver Age theme team. Ooh, ah. So, kicking it off and this was this was a tough decision to make because the best pilot for this character is not a mystical person, does not share it. And obviously, that was the hardest part. Everything on the sideline also needs to share the printed keyword. So 
We're doing Cap Cap Wolf here. No, 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 I know, I know, I know. So we're doing Cap Wolf. We got him buffed up pretty well, though. So Cap Wolf is going to have the Power Gem equipped to him. So he is going to be a 13 for 5 damage shooting all on his lonesome. Uh, and then the Pilot, not, uh, not assigned to him using the special sideline active trait, but just purely piloting Cap Wolf is Cathan. I, I wanted to put Cathan somewhere on the team, uh, but no one here could live long enough to make me feel like or really heal very well either. So instead, uh, what Cathan's going to be doing is giving Cap Wolf Penetrating Psychic Blast and Shape Change. So now instead of just being a running shot Precision Strike piece, he is a 13 for 5 Penetrating Damage piece. And he has Invulnerability, ESD, Super Senses, and Shape Change. He's very stacked defensively and offensively top dial, which I really like. And then sprinkling in here, my secondary attacker here, we have Ghost Rider. This is the super rare 048 Ghost Rider from Wheels of Vengeance. The you cannot take my powers away. This is going to help Cap Wolf out tremendously. Helps the whole team out. No pulse waves are going to get through everybody. No outwits are going to get rid of all of Captain America, Cap Wolf's really cool defense powers. So this Ghost Rider is just going to be standing there, Jason to most of my team, saying, nah, -uh, nope, I don't think so. And then kind of that's where the rest of my support characters come into play is the same thing of like keeping us a good defensive shell. But I'll go into my pseudo. OK, and then the person piloting Ghost Rider is Spirit Rider. That's going to give Ghost Rider probability control and precision strike. And he has his trial by fire and time to burn special abilities on his last click, which I think is like fine. Just an 18 with regen last click. I think that'll be okay when he's got his whole energy explosion, precision strike, pulse wave deal, and all that other stuff. Um, hopefully it gives him some life, but I think Ghost Rider just having precision strike and probability control. We needed more prob. I like Depth, Spirit Rider's pretty solid, so she is on there. The very tertiary attacker here is the new Daredevil Legacy card, the Mystical Daredevil. So for those that don't totally know what he does... Uh, you can pay 10 points, and then you give him a stunt token up to 30 points. And he's not KO'd when he would be KO'd, right? So instead, you remove a stunt token, and you roll a d6. On result of a 1, you give him an action token. But on a 2 through 6, he gains immune until your next turn, which means, okay, you KO him one turn. More than likely, not going to be able to attack him at all the next turn. And then the next turn after that, you KO him again. More than likely, can it's, it's like he's going to live for, like, five turns at least and that's if you're actually killing him every single turn so yeah. he's also got super senses he's just a solid like 11 for three on most of his i mean on every single click he's an 11 for three but he's got like a hypersonic speed click he's got a charge quake he's got plasticity poison he's got a sidestep blades like he's got some really good clicks to be on i really like this legacy daredevil and it's a lot of just, work to ko you know, him for only 10 a points lot. yeah or if they don't errata him zero points Zero points. Yeah, that also, too, is really weird. Uh, it is very weird. Yeah. Uh, I think it was very mentioned odd. somewhere else, but there is an errata coming. It just hasn't been okay, posted, good. so we don't know the extent. But safe to say they'll fix the wording a little so that it'll say you like get 10 points when you remove the stunt token, essentially. Yeah. Most likely. Of course, 10 points. Yeah. yeah. More than likely. That's what it says here. It does say if Daredevil is not scored when KO'd, right? But then it says when a stunt token is removed from him, your opponent scores 10 points. That is on, at least on HC units. I don't know. Yeah, so the the problem comes in where you can just not the... remove the stunt token and just let him ah. be KO'd. So oh, I see. you pay yeah, 10 no. points, and then your opponent has to, like, not in this setting, but in modern 300, Dang. you could potentially play 30 of this, and they would have to kill... They'd have to table your whole team before they'd get any points, because if there's one left, they haven't oh, scored anything. But if they oh, defeat your oh, force, they get 300. That's insane. That is not good at all. Very cool. <laughs> not gonna come up here. Thank goodness. Hopefully, with that errata, they also give him the Earth X keyword. Please give him the Earth X keyword. Please, I'm begging you. He's literally Earth X Daredevil. <laughs> you have a keyword for them. Anyways, there's Daredevil. That those are kind of my three attackers here uh providing some pretty solid support we have felix faust it feels like you just got to put this dude if you're building like a mystical silver team i feel like felix faust has to be on there 
obviously we're already stopping my opponent from getting rid of my powers now this guy is going to try to put a stop to any perplexes and probability control or outwits for people that aren't adjacent to ghost rider etc so he's also got great movement with stealth and just being able to pop four squares away from his current square which is really good and he himself is outwit prob control and enhancement meaning that's right cap wolf gets to now shoot for a penetrating precision strike of six damage with a 13 attack which is so dope so nasty uh so that's felix faust next up we got the new jennifer kale she's pretty dang good i have the nightbringer ring on her so she gives her stealth make up makes a more hindering terrain for her her and felix i can be a bit more liberal with where i want to place felix move him anywhere and then just give him some hindering terrain which is really nice uh giving her just a little more protection from rain she has esd but i'd rather her be totally stealth because it scares me a little bit 30 points three clicks alive and i really don't want her to die because the best thing about her though listener is she has the queen of untamed weirdness trait friendly characters in three squares have opposing characters combat values except range can't be modified when attacking this character or being attacked by this character so within three squares is so much freaking space on this small map it's actually kind of insane so now you can't outwit my powers you can't pulse wave through my powers and you cannot modify your damage value plus you can't modify your attack value plus anything it's really freaking good now you can't modify your defense value either when i attack which is also really solid uh her other ability she has which is just kind of a little bit of icing is warriors of the weird when opposing character within range and it's six range so she is that old school nice hefty six range uh, generates a bystander you may generate a copy of that bystander if you do ko any other bystanders that were generated this way so jennifer keeler just makes you get a copy of any opposing bystander that's made which is pretty solid i just a lot of bystanders in this game most of them pretty dang good if they're going to be generating it so jennifer kill is pretty solid next up i got the green lantern legacy card as well this is a triple tripled up legacy card team which is hilarious uh this is the green lantern from batman team up this is old alan scott here he's just there for again being a super cheap super duper cheap uh not only leadership which is kind of lacking on this team but we got cap wolf so we're fine but also a construct dropper i just it's hard for me to build a team without a construct dropper i just love them too much so we got old gl here filling that role which is super nice he can also give buffs to my defense which is super cool um again already adding to our defensive shell and he can help somebody else out which is really nice also he's got barrier or he can be offensively with like chainsaw boot etc etc he also has flight i don't have like anyone on this team that can fly everybody's kind of moving up themselves uh, I do also have Raven who can fly. This is the 25 point starter set version from Batman team up. She's just like a super cheap TK and also a flight piece. She's got shape change, super senses. Don't feel too bad if she does eventually get KO'd. She also has mystics, which is pretty dang solid. But overall, I don't think the team is the best. I think it's, it's toughest thing is kind of getting into position and like moving up with not a lot of carry, not a lot of like taxi type stuff. But it's pretty cool. We got our wolves that Cap Wolf brings in. Oh, actually, you know what? Do we get those? I'm a little curious now. Leadership. At the beginning of the game, you just generate. Oh, yeah, yeah. we totally can. Generate yeah, up we can to generate. Three. Up to three. That's totally legal. All right, sick. When we cool. first I was reviewed curious him, about the Highlander uh, rules. I, I thought for sure, for some reason in my brain, I thought for sure that like it was like you had to generate at least one. And then oh, somebody... Yeah. I can't remember where the conversation was, but like uh, somebody was like, yeah, zero's included and up to like zero's an option. And I was like, oh, of, of oh. course. Like we've had yeah. up to blah, blah, blah yeah. before. I just got stuck on the fact that it wasn't a may. It was just like it happens. Oh, sure. And yeah. so I was like, you at minimum have to. But yeah, there's some, some teams where, or some matches where it'll make more sense to generate more than it will in others. If your opponent like outranges you and they might be able to like come across and I don't know okay. pop one real hard like if in theme yeah, it's possible top. to play like Dark Phoenix and stuff still so you Ooh, don't want like true. an easy target like that but uh, yeah yeah so that's pretty much the team pretty dang simple it's just we got some really heavy attacker with Cap Wolf we have a really solid attacker with Ghost Rider. Daredevil's super annoying, hard to KO, and it's just a very defensive shield-type team. Try to 
stay close, keep all our powers. You don't get to modify your damage values. It's gonna, gonna kind of hopefully make the game just a bit of a slog, since uh, you know Ghost Rider like already ignores penetrating damage. Now the biggest thing is Cap Wolf can still get like penetrating damage through, since it is just invulnerability. Um, things like Exploit and Pensai will still mess him up a little bit, which is where we're hoping his like ESD and a few other like all those rollouts and stuff can hopefully come in handy, keeping him alive. But Team seems pretty fun. I think you could definitely dial it in a little bit more. I don't think it's totally like perfected yet, especially for like a theme that's silver format. But I think it's got really good grounds as like a nice defensive shell but heavy hitting team. Yeah. I think I think uh Wheels of Vengeance alone has opened well, rotation, but then Wheels of Vengeance especially, I think, uh has opened a lot for theme and for popper. But all the uh, all the riders and all the pilot slash like Cathon sort of shenanigans that can be done, I definitely think uh, revitalized, brought like some new life to those two formats. I think just the the addition of like the pilot trait and the addition of like Hell Cycle, all that stuff was just huge to add a ton of really cool things to the game, especially like you said theme pulp i think pulp is like the most healthy it's been i think pre-worlds pulp was in a really rough spot or during worlds even pulp was in a really rough spot of just completely dialed in stuff and now i think after notorious and especially after wheels i think wheels did a ton for pulp i think it makes it way more fun to play in with like a couple of figures like you know uh death rider what's his face <laughs> dracula a few others you know i think it just makes a ton of fun i also super agree with orb i love the use of orb in yeah orb. awesome and that was generic gallery if you guys have any mystical theme ideas for either pulp or silver theme let us know you can email those to us send them on facebook or if you give either my team or simian's team a try also let us know we would love to see it if you try these team out at either your local venue or a pulp or theme tournament let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions there are dozens of us all right, guys, this is where I'm going to plug a little mini plug for. That's right. You guess it. The Discord. Discord is part of the Patreon. Patreon, you give us five bucks a month or even more or even less if you don't want Discord benefits. But we have a ton of fun on the Discord. We hang out. We chat clicks. We play some games. We uh, do a little bit of team building. We do a couple of giveaways every month on Patreon. We just have an overall grand old time. And then it is a great place where a lot of people ask us questions. It's a direct message line straight to dial age and we always see them but if you don't want to have to pay for discord slash our patreon and to be in that you can also go ahead and send us an email dial it here hooks at gmail.com or just send us a message on facebook and ask us some questions that way that's what listener malcolm rush did and we're going to jump into his questions real quick right now so he's going to talk about some sets the rule is that you can only use characters in a set that you pick it's kind of interesting uh so it says best set to build a modern team out of why this is wow pretty dang tough i feel like off rip i want to say batman the animated series or batman team up because yep. you just get access to a ton of really good figures and then also all of the constructs so i think if you count like legacy cards and set i feel like batman team ups i feel like it's either batman team up or it's like a60 or beyond amazing it's definitely are, it's there's like some of the most meta-defining stuff of the last year came out of those three sets. Um, like, if you it was, just want to build a really good Masters of Evil team, then yeah. yeah, maybe just A60 could do it alone. But then, like, there's a ton of really, really good stuff. Spider-Man, Carnage Surfer, in Beyond Amazing, and then a ton of great support stuff in Bat. I think I'm going to go Batman team up, though. That's where I feel the most comfortable building out of. Yeah. I put Avengers 60th just because... Yeah, that's fair. I think the yeah the Masters of Evil have so much utility. Uh, you can throw the Mephisto on there or not, and then really like the rest of, like the rest of the set still like pretty good. There's like so much interesting stuff that if you weren't playing just a Masters of Evil theme team, you could still you know have a hundred points of Masters of Evil and then two hundred points of other good stuff on your team. You know, uh, very but, true. Yeah, I think it's easy enough. I've played against 300 points of Masters of Evil, and it's it's pretty rough. Like, it's not an easy team to take down. Oh, it's difficult. It's Even hard. though it's, I don't think it's the most optimal way to play them, it's 
very hard to deal with because uh, at any point they have access to like all kinds of shenanigans. So, yeah. Next up, he says, "What's the best set to build a pulp team, and why?" I again, if we're saying modern age, I think it goes Batman team up. I think the Titans and the Bat villains are really, really strong in pulp. I think they're really solid. Although. I could be persuaded now to say Wheels of Vengeance could be one of the best sets in modern build a pulp team with. What yeah. do you think? Keep it in mind that we can't use the motorcycles from Wheels and Pulp. It's still a very good set. Uh, just you can you can actually like I don't know if there's any common or uncommon figures in Wheels that you can pilot. I don't remember, but I mean you could do that in uh, in Pulp. You, you just can't remember. have equipment in Pulp. So yeah. Uh, hmm. I said Avengers 60th again because... Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, th- when we were doing the article series, a lot of my teams would... Uh, I mean, almost all of my teams that could include bats included bats. Um, Falcon is also in that set. That uh, so the true. Doctor Strange, the rare Doctor Strange from that gets rid of... His smoke cloud gets rid of uh, stealth. They can't use... Imp- or they can't... Lines of fire aren't hindered to opposing characters that are in one of his smoke clouds. So it gets rid of stealth and also doesn't give them the bonus that they would normally have from being in smoke cloud. And then uh, the rare Hulk from that hits like an absolute truck. So he does like those, those four figures alone make a really solid team. Then you've also got like Misty Knight who can give someone detective and then she has leadership. So she can essentially give somebody like the ability to be leadershiped off of from her Mm -hmm. It's true. Kind of funky, but it works. It's fun. So yeah. Okay. I I definitely think there's more synergy on the surface of Batman uh Batman team up. Yeah, Batman team up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the the Titans just they were like de- designed so well, so cohesively together where they each add something and the only one that you're like missing is what like red uh, no, Red X is a team. No, Red X is a rare, is a rare. and even like so it's just... Deathstroke who can cheat onto that is like yeah, a rare, you know? Like just all cyborg. the Titans. That's the only one. It's only Cyborg. It's Cyborg and it's I guess Dark Side is from Teen Titans Go. He's not really a Titan. But yeah, it's literally just the super rare cyborg. And even then, I really like the starter set cyborg a ton as well. Oh, that's Falcon right. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think the Titans are such a strong team, but I see what you mean now. Not, not going to lie, when you said A60, I was like, what in A60 is pulp? But yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Hulkster, Falcon, you know. Okay, I see it. This is a this is a good one. What is the best set to build a team in Golden Age? And this is really hard for a ton. Don't get me wrong, I have an answer. Off rip, easy, I have an answer. It, yeah. Listeners of the show are going to probably know what the answer is, but... Uh, <laughs> But like this is when you really think about Golden Age when because when you typically build for something like that, you're building, you're pulling out of so many different things. You usually don't stick too much to one set. You pull no. the best stuff from five years this way, five years that way. You know, like you're pulling from all over the place with Golden Age, you know, and so it's kind of hard to narrow down what is truly the best set to build a Golden Age team out of when typical Golden Age, Bronze Age, Silver, whatever when is just such a heavy mix. Almost always the best thing in modern would be also the best thing in golden. One of the best things in golden. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, to be fair, if you wanted to say golden, you could pick something like a set that has resources. So like war of the light or, um, Avengers assemble where you had like ID cards, stuff like that. But strictly speaking, just like in terms of if I was going to build out of a single set for like a competitive event, just one set I had to choose, and it was going to be golden. My choice was the X Men Dark Phoenix Saga because then I can play Ten to Go. And there we go, Dark Phoenix Saga. You have Ten to Go. No Try Try Sentinel though. No, no Try Try Sentinel. So it'd be <sighs> Ten to Go and like Try Dark Phoenix. O. I don't know. It doesn't rhyme. It's it's not as cool. It's not as fun. But I really enjoyed playing multiples of Wendigos, and I know everyone hated that, <laughs> and it was like. It wasn't yeah. broken, but it like was so close to being broken. The and this is all now to say that obviously I'm going to say the Guardians of the Galaxy 2014 set because uh, <laughs> that's the zombie team base. 
and it has Mole Man and all the good zombies that you pretty much want on it. So that that is my Golden Age set to build out of. I think I don't know. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, best set to build a team for fun home games. Ooh, this is a good yeah. one. So like those first three are really all I looked at super fast before we started the episode. So this one I'm leaning towards Disney Plus because I think that was a really, really, really fun set to play out of. I think having like the what if stuff, the WandaVision stuff, Falcon Winter Soldier stuff, Loki stuff, like I think that's really fun. I don't know. I might have to come back to this. Simeon, what do you think is a really good set to build out of for fun well, home games? So this is where we should have caveated all these questions with like what determines what is a set or not because like is a are we considering gravity feeds are we considering like small like starter or like you know standalone I mean, things yeah i would i would consider any like main set and then i would add those i would add that to the main set you know i would say if it, like deadpool x force has a fast forces that would be part of this you know the total set right i would consider that so i, mean, I said wwe I would Which, count WWE as a set. I would yeah. count that because uh, I think that's I've I've done it a few times where I've played. I don't remember what they call it, but the in-universe WWE where you don't get grand entrance. Oh yeah, and you don't get um, the protection from range. I mean, you you don't need it, but you don't get like that version of the WWE team ability. All right, and it's a ton of fun. It's a little bit slower because without grand entrance. You actually have to take, like, an action to get out of your starting area. Uh, but it's a ton of fun to play wrestlers versus wrestlers. And it makes so much more sense, like, within its own set. Oh, I think any set makes more sense, like, when it's, yeah. like, you know, power, like, level. But, yeah, not getting, like, blasted for, like, seven or something like that from, like, you, someone with hypersonic. When you can actually pin somebody, that's, yeah. like, the most fun. Uh, so, yeah. Dang, I think, you know what? I think you're right. I think I might have to just agree with you. I think WWE is one of the most fun sets you can just play out of just purely at-home fun game. Yeah, I think it is WWE. It's a ton of fun. Next up, Malcolm asks, best set to have a complete set of entire full collection. Simeon, what full sets do you have? Do you have any full sets? I used to have a full set of Wolverine and the X-Men. Okay. And then I moved and I lost, like some random like super rares here and there. So now I have like Bad. multiples of X-Man and uh, M and like a few other random super rares, but I'm missing some of the like Jubilee and stuff that I had at the time. Um, I think the only set that I have a full set of other than WWE, obviously, uh, geez, what is a more recent set that I have a full set of? I might actually not have a full set of anything other than WWE anymore. Uh, because, yeah, I think Avengers 60th, definitely not. Beyond Amazing, definitely not. Uh, I'm coming close to getting a full set of X of Swords, but the tarot cards still elude me a little bit. So that uh, one's sure. almost yeah, tangentially complete, but not quite. Wonder Woman 80th, I did at one point, and then I saw how much scarab and commissioner and stuff were going for so that quickly uh ended that huh. uh black panther and the illuminati i think is the last set that i actually have a full set of or the most recent one that i have a full set of oh sure that is such a good that was a set that i at one point almost owned a full set of and i was like man this is such a great set should i get the rest of it and then like after it rotated i was like oh, okay i don't actually play a lot <laughs> a lot of this like Sold like quite a bit of it, mostly like elders and stuff, and kept like a few other things. But that was such a good set, man. When Black Panther Illuminati came out, it was like an instant, like, oh, this is like one of the greatest sets of all time. Like, it's it was literally so fun and awesome and just great and sealed. Oh, such a great sealed set. Oh my gosh, so freaking fun. Yeah. Do you, would you say that's the best set to have a complete set of? Or is there a, a set that one that you don't even have a complete set of that you would say, oh, this so, is the best set to own a complete set of? Based off recency and, like, value, the best set to have a complete set of, in my opinion, would be Batman Team Up or Avengers 60th. Having a full set okay. of the Lantern, like, constructs and rings, uh, and then, like, legacy cards, all that stuff, or having 
a full set of Masters of Evil and Mephisto, I think is a really, really strong contender. Now, yeah. is it worth having, like, the rest of the set? Like, eh, like, I mean, yeah, because, like, you, if you could just snap your fingers, have one of those, you'd be fairly well set for competitive for the next, like, year and a half or two years, uh, depending on, like, rotation. And then you'd be fairly well set for silver for quite a while as well. But uh, if I had to pick a set, I think I'd go, personally, I'd go, like, Warlight. That's, like, a set that I'm just never going to take the time to collect. But if I could snap my fingers and just have it, like, in a factory set, like, setting kind of thing, I'd probably go Warlight. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I think I agree with you. I think it's Batman team up for me, just like everything you said. And then also, at one point, I did own a full set of that. I got rid of the stuff I didn't really care about that much, but I still own a ton of Batman team up, like full curve, basically full super rares. Uh, I just got rid of like the primes, but I think the chases are a ton of fun, even if they're not very expensive chases. I love the Batman team up chases. I think they're a pretty fun team. I think the starter's a great starter. I think the play at home kit, all that stuff, super shaggy is a ton of fun. And then I absolutely love what you said, lantern droppers, constructs, so much value in owning a full set of that. So I think that would be one of the best sets to have a complete set of. Best set to avoid buying, and why? Probably House of X, right? Like, just distribution-wise, probably don't buy some off-rip House of X stuff. Just because... Uh, yeah, if you could find loose boosters. real wacky. I would probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, I said, like, anything that's... Pretty much anything that's rotated or golden, you, you don't really want to, like, buy in... Like, as a new player, you don't want to buy into something where if, like, your venue has, like... Tonight's modern. You, the only thing in your collection is from like a set that rotated, you know, or a set that's oh, yeah. silver. Um, but yeah, like there are a few sets where if you were buying sealed product, the the return on value probably isn't there anymore. House of X is probably one of the ones that I would say I wouldn't take the risk on because yeah, when I first bought that, I I bought like six loose boosters and got six rares and so that that turned me off from buying any more house of x but Both i off. have collected quite a bit of house of x now uh it's just upon original drop i didn't buy a lot of sealed stuff yeah the i think you're probably right probably like truly like indie or sinister or just like some super old set that's like nothing's getting pulled out of there ever it's just like not worth getting into is probably more the correct answer probably the indie set might be the worst set to buy <laughs> by any of uh weirdest set that whiz kids has made i don't know what what would be a, a weird set secret wars battle world pretty weird they got the weird world people <laughs> yeah, in there i guess there. pretty yeah it's weird um what is i you know, honestly i feel like this next disney plus set themes. is going to be weird weird sub themes there's been weird sub themes i don't know if there's ever been a set where i was just like what on earth like you know sure. um obviously like in like the 2013 to like 2015 kind of era where they were just getting licenses for like everything and anything so like pacific rim gears of war all those like random little sets that was kind of like weird so i i like dota 2 is like the weird one for me where it was just it was weird. The five that figure so weird. not really starter not really fast forces came with one side of map um mage knight resurrections like a super weird set because that game was gone for a while and i don't think it had like a huge fan base really like maybe it did i don't really remember but i don't i didn't follow it so i don't know how big the fan base was at the time but the double dials or switch like dials and then anyone that used the hero clicks dials probably didn't know any of like the mage knight lore because it came out with like a new lore book or whatever to like keep you informed on what these characters were and who they were i still really like the set i think it's a fun set and it's a neat set yeah but it's weird it's very weird okay. that is true mage knight, well mage knight is just odd just very strange i think I think it's probably like 2013 in general was a weird year for sets. I suppose to a non-Yu-Gi-Oh fan, I think they would probably find the Yu-Gi-Oh set very, very weird. 
being like, what is all this random stuff? Oh, horse on fire. Okay. King Kong is here. Okay. Sword guy, sword guy, alligator sword guy. That dude's a clock. Uh, dragon, 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 <laughs> dragon, that, dragon. Is that guy just a sentient jar? I think he's a jar. Yep, that's okay. Had a uh, broccoli thing, herb, cabbage, what art, huh? Yeah, I think the Yu-Gi-Oh set is probably like the weirdest set <laughs> just because Yu-Gi-Oh itself is like really weird. So if you just like were ripping into like Yu-Gi-Oh sealed, like, yeah, it'd be like, huh, what is all this? The set that has the best gulps in it. This is hard Thank because you. sculpts have gotten um, really good lately. So if I wanted to do a like, there was a couple of ways I thought about this. It was like the best sculpts on average in one set, or like my favorite, just like favorite sculpts ranked as like far as like sets go. And there's one set that I collected more pieces based on sculpts alone than any other, and that was Avengers Infinity. Okay. Because all the, the cosmic, like, deities and stuff. So you had, like, Lord Chaos, Master Order. Did I play them a lot? Eh, like, not really. Um, gosh, what's the, the Triface guy? Uh, the Brand Inquisitor? Uh, uh, nope. Uh, that is a uh, Star Wars. The Living Tribunal. The Living three Tribunal. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love Living Tribunal sculpt. I think it's awesome. I don't play him ever. Like, there's just games don't usually have that high of point values for him. But then, yeah, Eternity, Infinity, um, Kronos, like some of the the weird Jafar looking guy with like triple TK. There's a lot of. Uh, he was great. Really Jakar. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, quite literally. Jakar or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Jakar. Uh, and it, even then, like the, the single base figures were pretty cool. The chase theme had that weird half and half speckle cosmic look and some of like the super rares had a ton of effects going on the adam warlock was really cool looking the quasar was interesting looking okay imagine infinity that's a good call i i think wheels of vengeance in this very well is probably recency bias but i think every almost every sculpt like pure quantity wise looks pretty dang solid all of the rares look really cool all of the super rares look really cool all the chases are like stunningly awesome looking so that's really high up there for me right now but that's huge recency bias i will have to say to go way back in time to a, a set that most people collected just for the sculpts i know you own a lot of it uh just for that reason it's like street fighter because street fighter just looks amazing there's all that clear plastic there's a lot of effects the jumping the kicking that's true. all of that it just looks really good I only own like a handful of Street Fighter figures, just like Giles and Kens and a few other people like that. And just the effects look great. They're really dynamic. They're great poses. They're just yeah. There's really almost awesome. zero hands and pockets. If if there is any hands and pockets, I don't remember it. But there's almost no zero way. in Street Fighter. No way. Yeah. There's no. There's not a lot of yeah. Just arms crossed or hands in pockets or just static. Just standing straight up and just looking for. You know what I mean? Like. There's usually some pretty good dynamic going on in there. Next up, best set that aged well, or an a uh, set that's aged the best. Hmm. This is an interesting question. This one was pretty Ow. obvious to me, at least in yeah. like the the way that I thought of this question. Because you can think what of like you, sets that yeah, are still playable, what do you think of like aging the best. What does that mean to you? For me, it was. If I had collected this entire set at some point, is it still like, is there still like value to be had in it? And the biggest like indicator of that in modern time is uh, does it have legacy cards? Like, did were there legacy cards released for it? Um, so I think the one that is the oldest that's aged the best is obviously Infinity Challenge, the very first set. There's been some pretty fun legacy cards that have come out of there. Some, you know, dollar for dollar, if you had that Thanos at one point, very good uh, return that on an investment true. across the years. Like 22 years later, and that thing was going for 100 bucks or something? 120 I don't know. Uh, but there's a set, Calder. There's a set that has more okay. legacy figures. An infinity challenge, even. Do you know what I feel like? Is? I feel like I know exactly what it is. It is. Is it not Captain America from 2011? Yes, Captain indeed. America, I think Captain America has aged the best. They have made it, 
I can't remember what the final count that we had was, but like somewhere around like eight legacy figures from there. It's like yeah. almost double digits, man. It's yeah. a lot. Modok, like, um, Ursa two Major, storm, the two Dark storm Star twice. League. Yeah, so Dark Star, Ursa Major, Modok, the uh, the th- or Human Torch, Invisible mm-hmm. Girl, and then Invisible Girl again. Technically, they yeah. made what's her face, Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl, yeah, she's the, yeah. One of the more Squirrel recent Girl ones. was another one, and then they made Captain America throwing a shield at the wall. So that's technically nine. Maybe it's almost ten. I'm sure, I don't know what else there might be, but yeah, there's a lot. They've pulled a lot from that set, honestly. Yeah, that's hey, one seventh of the way down. Couple more to go. All right, whiz kids, keep keep pumping out <laughs> Captain America set figures. That is what I'm going as well for a set that aged the best. Because when it came out, it was not a super popular set, like at all. It had no outlandishly, outwardly just broken piece in it. Um, unlike sets that came out around that time, like Giant Size X Men and the Web of Spider Man set, had really great meta picks and some very overpowered stuff in them. Uh, but this Captain America set just felt like just a pretty cool, just kind of flies under the radar type set. And now it's had a lot of life brought back into those pieces here in recency. So I think that's also what we're going to say it has aged the best. Uh, number 10, what is the best set that you own? For me personally, it's Wolverine and the X Men. Right on. It's it's one of the most diverse X Men sets that covers characters I personally care about and like events that I personally care about. It's got like some wacky kind of characters that don't belong in the normal X Men universe kind of comics. It's got classic villains that I really like. Uh, it's got great sculpts. It's got a fun chase theme that was like from a very prominent storyline the only thing it doesn't um, have is like a stellar wolverine so that is so ironic I, one wolverine is like eh. it's crazy because he was like my favorite wolverine for a while because he was the only like probably the best wolverine that had the animal keyword um and that's why like i really like playing on animal theme teams but yeah really he's not a great wolverine though which is very ironic for it being the wolverine and the x-men set but I do think you're right in saying like that is a really fun, diverse X Men set with really freaking good choice and chases. The Phoenix Five is just genius level chase idea. Uh, I think the set that my favorite set that I own is definitely the Captain America set. Same thing, kind of like we said, it aged well. I really enjoyed collecting all of it. I like to go back through, open some of it every once in a while, just because I do love that set and kind of a lot of the character choices. It has the vibe of my like personal favorite era of Captain America, which is like the '80s comics. Yeah, like Mark Grunewald run, uh, you know, Diamondback, you know, Jack Monroe is Nomad, you know, a classic Captain America. It even has some newer stuff like Bucky Cap is really cool. Has a really good Falcon, and it had the first ever Great Lakes Avengers ever brought into Hero Clicks, as well as super iconic versions for the Hydra big bads. That Baron Strucker sculpt is insanely cool. That Red Skull was really cool. And then, yeah, that MODOK was so dope that for, you know, aim and everything. So Cap, Cap's my uh, favorite set that I own. Yeah. 11, what makes a great set? Wow. This is just a loaded question, really. Yeah. There's, I, like, I think there's different things for different people. So, obviously, this is, you know, just opinion. Uh, For me personally, the things that I look at when I'm looking at buying into a set is, is the CUR something that I want a lot of, which normally means are there generics? I know not everyone loves generics. Most people are like, I'd rather have more characters that actually matter. But if I'm getting, like, multiples of a common or an uncommon... I want generics to be in the set so that I'm getting multiples of characters I actually want so I can play multiples of them, that kind of thing. Uh, And then good sub themes. Sometimes like there's been multiple sets where we have a chase theme that just, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know what it's supposed to be like uh, Captain America and the Avengers that chase. It's like, yes, these are Avengers, but half of them were 10 million BC Avengers. Half of them were just like, normal like thor was just normal thor i guess and then like the yeah. robbie reyes it's like i mean i guess he's ghost rider but like, you know they were just all kind of like funky uh it normal was like, versions yeah people we can give a, a clicks effects to it was very odd 
Yeah. Uh, and then versatility in the set. I like a set to have some higher end competitive stuff, but also like some goofy, casual, fun stuff. Some like fun interactions that like you might want to try, even though they might not be competitive. And then uh, it always helps if a set has extras. I'll like one of the best sets to buy into was Wonder Woman 80th because it had generics. It had, uh, gosh, uh, all the equipments. Uh, another one was like JLU, all the team up cards. You could sell like those team up cards and a more recent Batman team up. People complained that they were losing a figure, but I've seen random colored constructs go for more than any common or uncommon ever has. So I don't, I did not have a problem with buying into Batman team up and flipping constructs because I, I personally didn't collect any, but like I never pulled a ring in that set somehow. But, uh, yeah, I think, um, stuff like that, like it, it really makes the set feel like a good investment on like the buyer's end. Yeah. Maybe hurts a little bit for the collector because there's all that it's extra stuff you have stuff to collect. To get. Yeah. But it feels nice <laughs> when I essentially get an instant rebate. Like I, you know, spend $17 or whatever on a Batman team up booster and I pull a red chainsaw and like Larflees or something. It's like, sweet, I got Larflees and this pack paid for itself because I'm going to sell this construct. Right. And that's that's kind of what I was thinking, too. Like, when you say what makes a set great, my mind instantly went to, obviously, the main reason you get a set is because it has figures in it. That's That's a set. But when there's extras, when there's objects, when there's constructs, when there's things like that, I think... It's more so when they are a physical thing and not just like a card. I do think when it was team up cards, it didn't feel like it added as much to the set, honestly. Um, and tarot cards, just depending on how you felt, could have even detracted from the set or added from the set. But I know for sure that anytime a set has objects, it's just instantly like, oh, it goes up in my mind. It's like, well, I probably am going to want almost all of these objects if they're going to be in the set because they're probably going to be really good. Like, the Mighty Thor, great set. First set they ever like f- did full-fledged crazy objects with. And, man, kind of looking back, that was a ton of fun to play. It had some good meta stuff in it, had objects. It even had, like, super boosters with freaking, like, giants and stuff in it. That was a really fun set. And you could build really cool theme teams. So I think, ultimately, what makes a set good is... Okay, now, okay. Sorry, I'm getting all over the place. Let's look at a set that's, like, objectively you can be like that was a pretty bland and boring set and that's like war of the realms sure yeah. kind of felt really kind of uninspired it wasn't it didn't have a lot of characters that it was based off of you know what i mean it felt like there were some avengers or some Asgardians. guardians you know there were some guardians of the galaxy stuff like that and it felt just more kind of like a, a generic thor ish set it just it didn't know what it really wanted to be and i think a set needs to have like a clear cut hey these are these are what i'm trying to hit on this is what i'm trying to do that's what this set is. Like, Wheels of Vengeance feels like a very tight, cohesive set, where it's like, we are a monster, mystical, Ghost Rider-related set, all things weird. Boom. That's us. When you make a set that's specifically called something like War of the Realms, or even Avengers Forever, for instance, then you kind of want a lot of things from those respective storylines, and when you don't get a lot of things from those storylines, it kind of feels like the set is a little lacking, in a way. So... I think ultimately when a set what makes a set a really good set is it has a clear concise theme. That's what makes a set the best. And then I would say secondary to that, the figures feel good to play and own. Uh basically what you said, do they have a fun cur? I think that's truly what makes a set good cohesiveness of the set and theme, a really 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 fun cur. And then after that, just the icing is the extras because like Avengers um Avengers 60th, I really enjoyed. I thought it was a very cohesive set. It felt like, to me, Avengers from past, future, present, uh, popular storylines, popular storyline villains. You know, it felt all over the place, but that's because it was drawing from a few different decades of Avengers books. It gave us really, really, really good versions of the main three Avengers, stuff like that. And then it had a fun cur. But then it would have been just way more icing to me if there would have been some objects, you know, in that set. So... I feel like that's probably what makes it set the best thing is just number one, being cohesive. Number two, having really like actually like high quality, good dials and figures in the set and a fun curve that's going to be slammed together. And then like extra stuff 
particularly like objects, pretty much like objects or constructs or things like that, that are that added bit of plastic that feel really good to own and feel necessary to try to go buy a set if you want some symbiotes or billy clubs or whatever else, you know? So yeah, I think, yeah, rant over. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, number 12, what future sets do you want WizKids to make? Ooh, ooh. I mean, obviously, the first answer is always going to be uh, licenses and IPs that we don't already have in the game. Like right. Any, any and everything, you know, I'll take anything. I bought, I mean, Scooby-Doo is technically licensed with DC, I guess, but I bought Batman Team Up and I bought a bunch of, like, the chases and stuff because it's cool having those random things. The same reason I got, like, Space Ghost because it's cool having, like, the, the random not normal kind of uh, Marvel DC stuff. Yeah, it really is. Um, things that I think are more likely, well, like least likely to more likely. So first, like new IPs and stuff. Second, Amalgam. I don't think DC or Marvel will ever do it. But yeah. It's, it's still one of those like pipe dream 90s, uh, just like super interesting things that happened in the 90s that just would not happen today. It doesn't seem like they'll no. ever be on those terms again. Uh, then after that, it'd be a, a Marvel Knight set. So we already got a bunch of Marvel Knight kind of characters in Wheels of Vengeance, but Midnight Suns and Marvel Knights getting like a more sub-theme focus on those kind of dudes. Um, Punishers, like the one that I think we haven't gotten classic punisher i guess we got in spider-man beyond amazing we did get uh the hand punisher but mm, yeah just getting a, a classic frank we haven't gotten that in a while and then on the dc side i don't know if you've read any of like the night terrors stuff that dc released this year but that's been they're mostly like one shots okay, it's kind of like what if weird kind of stuff that's been kind of fun kind of spooky creepy stuff uh and then a event that happened I think like two years ago now, the Doomsday Clock, uh, with the Watchmen and stuff. That's okay. Yeah, I definitely think that'd be worth like a summer OP or a that would be set. an awesome DC set. Doomsday Clock, just purely for character choices. Man, that'd be freaking awesome. Yeah, that would be so dope. I'm right with you there because that would be so cool. The like the Watchmen, especially finally like comic versions of the Watchmen back into it would be so sick. Probably the set that I want the most, basically you said, like, IPs, new IPs, and that would be, like, Evil Dead, Team Fortress 2, stuff like that. I would freaking die if we got those sets. Well, after I bought those sets and played them at least for a little bit. But, you know, I those sets would be incredible to finally get. So I would love, love something like that. Then I would say, as far as, like, Marvel and DC goes, I've said a million times... Super Booster Green Lantern set. Give me, you know, Guy Gardner on a monster truck. Give me Kyle Rayner in a mech. Give me Jon Stewart operating like a crane as like a two by, you know, two by two, like giant green constructs. That's what I want more than anything. It's just like a super awesome, super cool Green Lantern set. And then as far as Marvel would go, it would be another crack at a Captain America set. That is something I would really want. Uh, probably more than a lot of things. It would just be... Uh, a Captain America set that really feels more so about Steve rather than, like, just the Avengers and the Master of Evil and stuff. I would like the villains to more so be, like, Serpent Society, Hydra villains, stuff like that. Maybe even a uh, heavier focus on some of these more recent books would be really cool. As well as, I would absolutely love a, um, like, the chase theme to be Captain America and the Avengers, the nes or the snes or the slash arcade cabinet game yeah. i think that would be hilarious if they did i don't know how people would feel about these being chases though because it would probably just be like literally flat pixel sculpts and people might hate them but if you made them like really stupid good or even if you sprinkled these in throughout like a marvel video game set okay never mind i take back my specific marvel captain america set. a marvel video game set is truly what i want marvel's capcom 2 marvel's capcom uh, like three and then a Captain America and the Avengers type stuff, the like Spider-Man Game Boy style games, things like that all like merged into a set Lego Marvel somehow <laughs> how in it would be really sick. But, you know, off the video game thing, seriously, like a Captain America set that focuses on like the Captain America core, 
alternate versions of Steve because we've gotten so many. If we truly got a set that actually had all like the people that wielded the shield, um, because there's this great insane story about how the Captain America in the 50s isn't really Steve Rogers. Those comic books were real. They really happened, but they weren't actually Steve Rogers. They were somebody else and that wasn't Bucky. And all this other stuff is like so fun and so interesting. And I think that has not really been fleshed out at all. So I would love to see a set with all these characters. Um, yeah, that'd be a huge, huge dream set of mine. That would be hyper handmade tailored to just pretty much just me. Uh, but it'd be great. No, and that is if we could get the Capcom on board. Oh, be a Capcom a on board, Capcom, dude. Uh, that would be uh, that'd be a great five sets, five full sets that we would need. Oh, please to get everything. Please, on board. yeah, dude. Capcom on board, getting a oh, Marvel's Capcom three for me. Just like zero Phoenix Wright, Frank West. Uh, it would just be kind of insane to get some of these characters into hero clicks. It'd be so fun. Uh, next up, we got some questions from the Discord. I already plugged the Patreon. I'm not going to do it again. Chef Mikey asks, what keyword do you think deserves more love in hero clicks? Good question. Simeon, what's a, what's a keyword that just hasn't gotten enough love recently that deserves a little bit more? Well, because I played it today, I think mm. I'm going to have to go with... Let's see. What was it again? Ah, uh, yes. Santa's Workshop keyword. Non-theme? Oh. <laughs> there are a total of four characters in the history of clicks yeah. that have Santa's Workshop keyword, and only two out of those four have ever been modern at the same time. That's uh, Gingerbread Man and Surfing Gingerbread Man. <laughs> oh. Toy Soldier came out in 2016. That is a bummer. And four years before that, Holiday Elf came out, so... Uh, yeah, it's a. <laughs> I I think it's goofy, and I I like the keyword, even though it's. I I mostly like the keyword because it's goofy. I don't necessarily think it's a good team, and honestly, let's see, it comes out to two hundred and thirty points, so it's not a team, but uh, it is interesting. Luckily, the gingerbread men aren't unique, so you can play multiples of gingerbread men. Toy soldier is unique. So you can't play multiples of him, but yeah, I think that'd be a, a fun one to take a new crack at. As far as like a non-named keyword, uh, I think Warrior could sure use. Okay, some that's help. fair. Um, mostly, I just want more f options to play Eddie with, but uh, no, I I think Warrior. You get like a lot of the same kind of characters, but it does feel like. Maybe we just we just don't quite get warriors in hero clicks, and then it's like hard to distinguish because it's like what makes someone a warrior but not a soldier? What makes someone a soldier but not a warrior? You know, like is an Amazonian a warrior but not a soldier? Because like they should technically be both. You know, there's all these weird questions. Uh, but yeah, warrior definitely feels like it's a slightly it's underused a little, one, a little lackluster, I suppose. Yeah, that's you know I'm gonna probably say ah, I really hate saying soldier just because it's like my favorite keyword and I would just like it to be better uh, but it is still such a solid keyword but I would like to see a little more diverse love for the soldier keyword it's it's mostly attackers which obviously is kind of what you expect but still I would like I don't know some more like unique ones some good supporty soldiers some more pilots stuff like that well, it's, it's weird because like Super Scroll has Warrior and Soldier. And yeah, he's got both. Roland, the like the X Men version of the Super Scroll. Right. Only Warrior. That Even is though he's part of like of the weird. Scroll Army. Yeah. He's enlisted. Would be pretty much the well, same. Like, yeah. There's there's so many people there. It's like, why aren't you both? Because it oh, like, that actually you know, is really odd. Amazon Warrior, just Warrior, no Soldier. Amazon of uh, Bonham McDowell. Just soldier, warrior. no soldier. Sorry, just soldier, no warrior. Yeah. Oh, that is super odd. I don't, I, yeah, uh, I just don't, I don't understand. Like, it, it doesn't, it feels like when we get one, we don't get both, which is fine. I don't think it should yeah, automatically be both. Yeah. But, uh, let's see, I'm typing in soldier here to see Cyborgman, really. Veteran. Thank you for your I guess, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, that's what I thought when I typed it too. I was like, oh, huh. Interesting. Yeah, so, so like Hydra agent, 
I don't think Hydra Agent deserves Warrior, but right. it makes sense no. that they've got Soldier. Right, because they're like um, an army, yeah. Now, Hammer, the super rare Hydra version of Thor, he has Soldier, but not Warrior. He's got Brute. I, was yeah, like, I would think I of him would... more as like a Warrior, maybe a Soldier. I don't really, I've never read whatever he's in, but just the, like based on the fact that he's like a God of War kind of character. Right. It would make sense for him to have Warrior, I think. Mm, I, I agree know. with that. No, I it's, agree. A, it's a weird rant, but I'm going to keep yeah. it. Uh, and then probably for a named keyword, invaders. Man, we get like no invaders. And I get it. They are a team from the 1940s. They don't pop up. Uh, let me check ever in comics right now. But it never really felt like we had a great team of invaders. The best time we had invaders was like the Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. set was the last time we truly got like an invader sub theme pretty well fleshed out with some classic invaders uh not like a classic cat but he like had come out like the set before so it kind of works but like invaders and then along the same vein howling commandos we have not gotten like hum dum dugan game jones gabe jones uh those like main howling commandos and like nick fury like normal nick fury as like a howling commando in a super long time in forever Uh, We've gotten some as their, like, shield roles, but not as Howling Commandos, not in a very, very, very long time. I would love to see that, as well as a ton of members of the Howling Commandos that just never got made. Like, we finally have a Frenchie in Heroclix, which is the when he's Moon Knight's friend, but I would like to see a Frenchie of a younger Frenchie when he was a Howling Commando would be really cool. So I would think finally getting... You could say the same thing for, like, the Rock uh, is the easy company. Sergeant Rock's easy company. That would be great to finally get, right? But... Um, sure yeah both i mean both would be good they're the classic like soldiery comics those would be great see like sergeant rock i would consider him a warrior but you consider it 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 makes more sense for him to just be soldier but true blue soldier right yeah it does but like uh, just characteristically he seems like Uh, uh, sure yeah i guess like that's that's a like a weird like hole to like what makes someone a war like like Wolverine acts like a, I mean I guess the X know, of yeah. Swords Wolverine probably does have warrior now that I'm thinking of it. I think a lot of X of Swords actually has soldier, which is is it really? Yeah, Wolverine does have the uh this is the play at home or no, not play at home. Uh this is the starter Wolverine has soldier and warrior. Is that the only one? Wow, that's the only one. Okay. Uh the normal set Wolverine does not, but uh the starter set one has both okay yeah Yeah, like that's a storyline where it makes sense like the x-men are like on one side of a war the uh arako people are on the other side of the war they're soldiers in that war and they're also warriors because they're fighting with swords i guess is what makes them that but no yeah the next question we got is from a warbird jedi here and he asks we got zod and notorious notorious wow and we also got the trio as an ultra chase in the same set. But do you think they'll have an Ursa and Non as singles in the next DC set? I'd be okay if they did if they were different sculpts, only because I feel like it it cheapens the ultra chase reusing the sculpt. I think just reusing Zod is fine. But if you were to then like just reuse Ursa and Non, then I would feel like the Ultra Chase is like super cheapened. If you reuse the sculpt and use them, I think Zod, Ursa, Non together as a team are great. And I think that's an awesome Ultra Chase. But I think once you go, well, why own the Ultra Chase when I can just own all three characters separately and play them like this? I don't like that. I really don't. I feel like it kind of ruins the feel of the Ultra Chase, honestly. So if they do put them in the next DC set, honestly, I hope they don't. I'm Uh, very surprised that they uh, weren't in the set. Like, I, when we saw Zod... And we right. had seen like the sculpt of the Ultra Chase prior to that, and then we saw Zod. I thought for sure, Ursa and Non or whatever. I thought they'd definitely get their own dials or their own like sculpts. Um, but I agree. I, I think that it's a. It'd be best if like we didn't get those. At least maybe not. Maybe in like um, a monthly OP or something. That'd be fine. Get like the the th- trio off base, and then we get like a new sculpt for Zod or something. But uh, it definitely, like, wouldn't have felt great if those three sculpts were in the set. And then, because they did that 
what was it, Brave and the Bold uh, Avengers, where they would take, like, the chases were just the... Oh, yeah, were, like, commons repainted. Yeah, they were just, like, yeah, slapped dude, on, all like, of a, those white on a base ones. together. Yeah. Yeah, those were super tough. The the white lanterns were all like commons and uncommons, just like repainted with like white bases and stuff. And I was like, no. So yeah. What was? There's one that was it Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Were they a duo? They were a duo in that set. Yeah, they were a duo. But I don't think yeah Booster Gold didn't have a single one in there. I'd have to look at that again. But yeah, it felt like they straight up took like some of the sculpts and then just like put both like fire and ice or something like they just put them both on like a uh, peanut base and we're like now it's a super rare or now it's a chase right all right and then that is the last question that we have here on discord ladies and gentlemen that is going to be our show before you go though and i can't believe we haven't plugged this yet but we are doing a massive end of the year live stream where we do an award show for the best of hero clicks in 2023 there is going to be a link to a google form in the description of this podcast asking all sorts of questions what your favorite sculpt of the year was the best set the best iconics best map etc cetera, etc cetera. it's going to be a, f- a whole bunch of questions so i want you to go ahead and answer them to the best of your ability in the google form below we are going to try to do a huge award show like we do every year if you're a dial h listener and have been for quite a long time then you know that we do the clicksies and it's a super fun huge event where we go live on youtube and we hand out these awards to the best ofs for hero clicks of the current year uh we like to mention what won the categories last year this is we're planning to make it the biggest and best year yet we are doing it in a way where more than ever more people and more diverse people can vote so i'm very very excited about that so there is a again i'm gonna say it again there's a link to a google form in the description of this podcast right now please go vote for your favorite pieces write them in It'll be a super fun time. And then join us December 30th. So that's 27 days from now. December 30th, that's Saturday, I believe. We'll be going live on YouTube, handing out all the awards with one heck of a presentation. It is going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be a night in Hollywood. It's going to feel great. So make sure to please go vote and do all of that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if, uh, while you're, recapping the year answering those questions you think to yourself wow i really wish i had picked up that figure you know where you can do that that's right mm. segue you can do that at coolstuffinc.com they currently have some sales going on a lot of sales for uh wheels of vengeance some decent prices on the chases they have the uh the guardians of the galaxy holiday calendar is out for sale up for sale whatever however you want to call it um, all the figures have been split up, so unless you're looking for a certain arm, then uh, you can <laughs> buy you know just the ones that you want, or you can buy the full cool version where it's an advent calendar, which is what I suggest. Uh, and if you want to save a little bit of money when you do that, use code DIAL5 to save 5% off all your Cool Stuff Inc. orders. And if you want to check out some of WizKid's dealings and wheelings they've got some cases or not cases but bricks for bricks stuff going on pretty interesting pretty good prices if i do say so uh i don't know if the gingerbread men are still up for grabs the surfing gingerbread men but uh yeah brick for brick is pretty pretty solid and when you're purchasing some things from the whiz kids the shop.wizkids.com store you can use code dial h10 to save 10 percent off your hero clicks orders doesn't include let's see pre-orders scott porters iconics and i think that's it i think yeah i think that's yeah iconic scott porters and pre-orders i think that's all the stuff it doesn't include so check them out use the codes save yourself some money christmas is coming up you need to save all the money you can yeah, absolutely and like always ladies and gentlemen happy trails and happy holidays so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Canada. We have to stop. And my bones are metal. Oh,